a very good evening to the respected chairpersons the organizers my panelists and the audience thank you for having me here today before starting our session i would like to remember our very respected and loved uh, teacher dr bishwajit bandopadhyay he is uh, we'll always be missing him but uh, he will always be there with us see the sequential segmental approach is the holy grail of pediatric cardiology surprises are nice but not on the ot table the risk factors such as prolonged cross clamp time as well as icu stay has been shown to have neurological sequelae and recent research have shown that there are uh, even a few days of extra icu stay can lead to significant neurodevelopmental issues in the child our first case is a term baby who was uh, referred to us for a murmur had a small perimembranous restricted vsd as well as a small pda and an unregressed neonatal ph which was not unusual at that age was discharged in a stable condition however came back with features of frank failure at 6 weeks this was the echo which was showing a perimembranous vsd about 3 mm just sitting just behind the tricuspid valve and uh, there was also a hemodynamically significant pda with low velocity flow in diastole not controlled on anti failure treatment this child had to be operated so the most important things that we have to uh, look for even in a mundane case of uh, vsd would be definitely the geography and location the borders the size the number as well as any associated malformation such as coarctation or any other uh, uh, things like valvular override or malalignment or straddling especially in cases of tetralogy dorv or in cases of single ventricular complexes so this is the international system classification for the vsd this is the geographic classification depending on the location always from the rv side because the surgeon is going to put a patch from that side and also the borders such as uh, the doubly committed vsd will be in the region of the fibrous continuity continuity of the uh, semilunar valves and the perimembranous vsd in the region of the fibrous continuity of the tricuspid and mitral valves this is a very helpful view the on phase view or the clock phase view to uh, differentiate between outlet and the perimembranous vsd anywhere between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock position would be the perimembranous vsd as is shown here and beyond 1 o'clock uh, would be the outlet or doubly committed vsd this is the pathology specimen of a large perimembranous or inlet vsd and uh, this is the inlet muscular vsd sitting behind the tricuspid valve and this is the location of the conduction bundle situated superiorly and a little anteriorly also so this is a large inlet vsd with its muscular extension as can be seen in cases of outlet vsds which are present just below the semilunar valves rcc prolapse is common and uh, this is the mechanism of the prolapse and these are the malaligned vsds as can be seen here associated usually with tetralogies uh, with a good degree of aortic overriding as well as malalignment of the septum over here causing uh, the uh, outlet outflow tract obstruction it is important to uh, rule out any straddling of the valves such as straddling of the tricuspid valves in cases of double outlet right ventricles also uh, valvular overriding and gerbode defects etc multiple or swiss cheese vsds should be ruled out preoperatively as well and uh, nowadays they have developed different techniques such as the sand hybrid techniques or the sandwich patch approach this is from the uh, world journal of pediatric and cardiac uh, surgery our second case is a, a newborn again few hours old who crashes in the nicu had was stabilized also in the nicu but uh, this uh, sweep from posterior to anterior showed the left ventricular outflow tract dividing into two uh, branches which is indicative of a trach of a tga and this is the posterior sweep of the down the downward sweep of the left ventricular outflow tract again showing that probably it is a pulmonary artery arising from the lv and this is the uh, 
alignment of the great vessels pulmonary artery posterior and dividing into two branches and no vsds tga with an intact interventricular septum so i'm searching for the vsd over here no vsds it's an intact septum and also very tiny restrictive uh, pfo and uh, this child was taken up for switch and there was no much uh, not much of a uh, disparity between the outflow tracts so this is the basic uh, evaluation of the uh, tgas and it will be discussed in details later and also we must evaluate the coronaries as well the usually the dictum is if we stand on the non coronary cast the right hand side sinus gives rise to the uh, left pulmonary left coronary artery and the left hand side sinus gives rise to the right coronary artery in cases of tga but there can be a whole lot of permutation and combinations of the coronaries uh, which like single coronary arteries or coronaries arising from the opposite sinuses or intramural coronaries as well so this is the, the how we assess the lv preparedness that is the d shaped or banana shaped lv indicative of a high right ventricular systolic pressure also left left ventricular posterior wall diameter and left ventricular mass is important which will decide whether the child will go for an atrial switch or an arterial switch or maybe will need a training with a pa band and vt shunt this will also be discussed later and however god is not very kind always so these are the conditions where there is a great outflow tract obstruction left ventricular outflow tract obstruction as well as a large vsd it's a pretty large vsd so in these cases complex cases of transposition we have other modalities of operation as well our third case is another case of uh, cyanotic infant who came with incessant crying and desaturations and was stabilized in the pcu was a pretty uh, usual case of tetralogic presenting with spells we can see the large vsd with the overriding of the aorta over here and also the outflow tract malalignment causing the um, pul pulmonary obstructions as well as uh, the subcostal sweep showing there are no extra vsds the pulmonary artery as well as pulmonary annulus as well as the um, branch pulmonary arteries were very quite narrow below 2 z scores so we will be discussing the pre op evaluations as well and this is the coronaries that are coming out from the uh, the coronaries that can cause a problem in the operation for tetralogies especially the coronary crossing the rvot such as a large conal branch coming out from the right coronary artery or a uh, left vein anterior descending artery coming out directly from the right coronary artery or the right coronary artery itself coming out from the single coronary complex however the uh, patients don't come reading the book so we have another case of a pre adolescent boy coming with effort intolerance palpitations cyanosis clubbing and this child also has a large uh, malaligned vsd uh, infundibular and pul pulmonary valvular and infundibular stenosis as well as valvular overriding however this child had an epstein's anomaly of the tricuspid valve as well seeing the great the displacement of the septal leaflet of about 10 mm or more and here is the narrow mpa and the branch pulmonary arteries there was no asd this child was also operated and was doing well this child underwent a total correction for the intracardiac repair as well as the cone reconstruction of the epstein's valve now there is no residual uh, ventricular septal defect no significant right ventricular outflow tract obstruction or regurgitation and there is no significant uh, stenosis or regurgitation in the reconstructed epstein's valve as well so we have a very esteemed panelists to let to uh, lead us through the operations dr i would my first question is to dr shushan mukhopadhyay who is the head of the department of cardiothoracic surgery of apollo glenicles hospital kolkata sir in cases of vsd what should the echo include what is your expectation from us yeah i'm uh, 
Thanks, uh, Deb Dutta. It was a nice presentation and uh, very, very, very nicely presented, elucidated all the uh, problems. Uh, VSD is a basic uh, anomaly which is the most common uh, problems. And even though I'm an adult surgeon, I, I <laughs> have to operate VSDs. We look at the geography, the, the area of the VSD where it is in the septum, the borders. And we uh, look at uh, uh, the valvular problems, if there are any, any associated problems, the size, number, uh, and uh, any overrides, straddling, and all that. So essentially, we'll have to have a, a proper anatomy elucidated uh, prior to going in for surgery. And uh, uh, thanks to our uh, uh, echocardiographers, I, we don't need to do anything else but an echocardiography with uh, 2D echocardiography along with the PISA measurements can give us uh, exact elucidation of uh, what we need to do during an operation. Thank you, sir. Also, uh, what is the importance of the location and the borders? Like, yeah, uh, we would uh, actually, uh, uh, one is uh, uh, the ease of uh, doing the operation. Most of the VSTs, what we face is uh, commonest is the perimembranous one, but uh, most important is to be aware of the conduction tissues uh, because uh, when we uh, close the VSTs, we would like to know uh, uh, where, where the conduction tissue is expected to be there. Uh, if there is no posterior border or no muscle bar uh, uh, between the tricuspid uh, annulus, uh, uh, then we, we have to be careful. The sutures have to be taken very carefully, the junctional areas to us to avoid uh, conduction uh, anomalies. At the same time, we should not leave a residual uh, VST after we, we, we have done the procedure. Uh, uh, any uh, small comments on the operative approaches that we use? By far, uh, the, the approach, uh, what I personally do, and I think it is uh, followed, is the uh, atrial approach, the right atrial approach, because it's a very convenient approach for all the VSDs, except for maybe some uh, doubly committed transpulmonary ones where we can have uh, 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 both the transpulmonary and the right atrial approach. Sometimes it was described that we can have an RV uh, approach for uh, junction, uh, uh, perimembranous VSDs because uh, at the area of uh, tricuspid to uh, uh, aortic valve junction, it's easier to take a bite, but uh, approach is uh, not required nowadays. We uh, just can do it through the right atrial approach. For Swiss cheese uh, defects, when there is apical VSDs, they're very low down, multiple VSDs, uh, maybe an RVLV combination, but I have not personally uh, uh, encountered that kind of a problem. And there could be hybrid techniques for uh, multiple VSDs as well. A few of the VSDs tackled surgically and few of the VSDs can be tackled uh, at, uh, intervention. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And uh, we do do uh, the PA band for the multiple VSDs with cheese, as you were saying. And uh, right. for very large VSDs, like the inlet VSDs that was shown in the presentation, or maybe a single ventricle okay. complexes. Mm -hmm. But of course, the PA band will always have the risk of the distortion of the pulmonary Pulmary. trunk, as well as the distal migration of the band yes. and the other complications as well. Those complications are there. We have to be very careful when we do a pulmonary band and uh, exactly uh, whatever the time scale, maybe two weeks to six weeks, uh, we need to take down or maybe later on if, if it's done for something else. But for VSDs, of course, uh, we'll have to take care. Uh, uh, sometimes after banding, uh, we may expect certain uh, small VSTs to close down so as to reduce the number of VSTs, but we have to be very careful with this procedure so as to not to cause complications rather than uh, uh, serving the purpose of uh, treating the pulmonary uh, arterial hypertension. Yeah. And also, sir, the double uh, flap technique for large, very large VSDs leaving a uh, unidirectional flap may be done. Uh, unidirectional for a very hypertensive VSTs, we do. Uh, flap valve closure, uh, uh, where we can allow uh, 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 reversal of shunt when uh, the right ventricular pressure increases. That is described, of course, in very hypertensive VSDs, and it could be a good, uh, good, good uh, outlet when we are operating on uh, very hypertensive VSDs uh, to prevent uh, hypertensive crisis in cases of emergency in very small babies. Yes. Of course, we would also, uh, for a large left to right shunt, we would check the operability with uh, CAT. And these are True, the but that, that that only becomes relevant when the pa patients uh, are uh, elderly. Uh, I mean, yes. more 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 older. Uh, for a kid with uh, even with uh, by uh, bidirectional shunt, we would uh, go in for uh, VST closure. We would test with uh, oxygen and all that so as to reduce the pulmonary pressure and increase the shunt. 
and then we do the procedure with uh, care and post-operative uh, management is very, very important at that point. Yes. Thank you, sir. These are the various uh, devices. devices for the VSD and that is a different uh, discussion totally. Sir, mm -hmm. when do we operate in a VSD with an RCC prolapse? See, any outlet VSD is essentially uh, showing a prolapsing uh, 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 right coronary cusp. We should uh, tackle the uh, VSD there, then and there, because uh, the RCC, is, uh, the, the, the regurgitation is going to, the prolapse is going to increase because of the venturi, uh, Bernoulli effect, uh, venturi effect or whatever it is. So we, it's very important to tackle this uh, problem early on, uh, because if we uh, leave the uh, uh, VSD for a later uh, closure, the right coronary cusp may, uh, actually the sinus may dilate, the coronary cusp may become very difficult to manage and repair is uh, not possible for the aortic valve. So it's uh, important to operate these uh, problems very early on to prevent uh, progressive uh, aortic regurgitation yes. and later complications. So if in cases of, so I would say that in cases of any significant aortic regurgitation, moderate or so causing chamber dilatation or maybe a uh, a severe aortic regurgitation, we would go for an operation and uh, aortic valve repair as well. Yeah, of course, of course. But uh, why do you wait for the regurgitation for outlet? But in the VSDs that can uh, cause uh, aortic regurgitation, so you have to tackle them the outlet uh, supracrystal types. So Thank you, sir. Better to Thank, yeah. Thank you. Right then. And uh, in the post operative VCO, we would, I'll just rush over this a little because we have time constraints also. We would look for residual lesions, any no pH evidence of... PH, pH is yes. there or not. Uh, we look at the tricuspid valves because sometimes we need to take down the tricuspid valve at the insertion or the origin to, to close the VSDs completely. So we look at the tricuspid valve function, the ventricular function and in effusions are there or not. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Thank this is the well. tiny residual uh, VSD of a post-operative large, right. very large VSD. Tiny residual just above the patch. With the catheter later on, if, yeah, if needed yeah. at all. Or you can just leave it alone and follow it up with the pulmonary pressure assessment. You can Thank you very much, sir. I would like to uh, now go to the case, our second case, that is the case of the transposition with intact interventricular septum to Dr. Amitabha Chattopadhyay, sir. Uh, sir is the uh, senior consultant and head of the Department of Pediatric Cardiology of NH Howrah, Kolkata, and my teacher as well. Uh, sir, uh, could you just take us through the pre-op evaluation of the transposition of great arteries? Yeah, good evening, everyone. So pre-op assessment, we'll first confirm the diagnosis that it's a TGA. First of all, because there are several situations where you can have a TGA-like situation. For example, in DORB, it's a mimicker that it can be mimic as a TGA. So we have to ascertain the relationship whether the great arteries are uh, asserting from the ventricles. The left ventricle is giving rise to the uh, pulmonary artery and the aorta is rising from the right ventricle. After you confirm the diagnosis, then gradually we go by the anatomical. If we go from above below, we should see by the, for the ASDs the VSD, where it is located, whether it's a tossing wing anomaly or it's just a VSD, uh, any additional VSDs, whether now we look for the physiology because the, here the QPQS ratio has to be maintained and the two main factors which maintain the QPQS ratio are the PDA and the ASD or the PFO. Now, if both are adequate and the saturations are adequate in the range of say 85 and above or between 80 to 85 percent, we are quite satisfied. If the size of the PD is small, we start prostin. And if the size of the ASD or the TFO is restricted, we should be starting. We should be going for a melonucleus epistone. Coming to the outflow tracks, whether the right ventricular outflow track or the left ventricular outflow track are adequate or not, and whether there is any obstruction, this leads to a several. Uh, this leads to several uh, conclusions because. If there is any obstruction, then we have we might have to go for other kinds of surgeries as well. Coming to the great vessel relationship, whether they are anterior posterior side by side or any other relationship. Last but not the least, <laughs> which uh, there is pattern, it's a coronary pattern, whether this is a single coronaries or any other restrictive patterns. This is the coronary pattern which uh, we would like to show that usually, like you were saying, if we stand on the non-coronary cusp and face the pulmonary annulus. 
then from the right hand side it is the left coronary artery and from the left hand side it is the right coronary artery sinus 1 and sinus 2 yeah among according to the ridley uh, yakup classifications if of all the coronary arteries most of the our surgicals our surgicals uh, are so skilled our surgeons are so skilled and they can go forward for any kind of uh, all the surgeons are so skilled that they can go forward for any kind of coronary combination except the only the intramural ones they might cause a nightmare for them that also there are some recent papers that also can be mitigated by different forms of surgery coming to the next topic suppose when the td when the tj baby presents a little bit later what does happen to that those persons what we really do is we calculate several mass indexes and several other things whereby the baby can be ascertained whether the baby can go for an arterial switch or the baby if really is late can go for a training lv training or if it is really baby is unfortunate we can go we have to go for a sending surgery now the indications for lv whether the doctor has uh, indicated in this slide indications for lv retraining on combination of factors like age more than 3 weeks but to be practically present plenty of surgeons as a surgeons will agree on the panel the plenty of surgeons will go for the primary artery switch operation even if the baby might present as the fourth or fifth week depending on the i mean the and depending on the protocol of the center if the lv is really small the banana shape or the interpenetral septum is d shaped or other invaginating into the left ventricle then probably we might go for some other thing else if the lv mass is less than 35 gram per meter square indexed and if the left ventricular posterior wall diameter is less than four in some cases they might go as low as 3.5 in these cases we might think of other options rather than our primary arterial switch the uh, diagram depicted here the diagram depicted here is one of the advanced one because they take the two diameters as the anterior posterior and the lateral diameters and the different formations formations are one of the methods whereby the lv preparedness can be uh, asserted the other way if the baby really presents late and is and the primary arterial switch is out of the question we can go for a sending or if the center agrees then you can go for an lv retraining by a band shunt which is the commonest method or even on the table like some surgeons uh, prefer the lv to be trained on the table for a duration of say 3 to 4 hours so uh, sir this is the uh, arterial switch operation and uh, this is uh, a pictorial depiction with where the arteries are dissected from the roots and uh, stitched into the other uh, artery on the other root and the coronary button are also dissected and uh, put on the neo aorta but uh, a few words on the post op uh, evaluation of aso maybe yeah once you go up the post operative phase immediately the post operative period uh, in the immediate post operative period the uh, basic points which has to be noted is whether the lv is coping up that's the main crux of the story whether the lv is coping up so for the lv to be coping up we have to see the lv function whether the la pressure is rising and obviously if there are any associated factors like lv ot obstruction rv ot obstruction or there if there is any regurgitations coronaries pose several problems the the main one is whether there is any coronal kinking coronary artery kinking especially during the coronary switch so these things as a surgeon they will always look after that whether there is osteal stenosis or obviously if there is any kink in the pathway of the coronaries especially when the coronaries travel quite a distance on the coronary uh, button transfer the cardiac function is obviously one of the main factors which can be hampered if the afterload and the preload are not matched if the afterload is not matched basically that will form a burden on the lv and the lv in turn will cause an rv failure as well the lecomps or branch pulmonary arteries usually the thing which which we have is there is some amount of branch pulmonary artery stenosis associated because the aorta in the min, in between which is com constantly compressing on the branch pulmonary arteries they can lead to some physiological stenosis or even to physical stenosis as well on the long run which might need to be addressed on a later date and uh, sir so these were the class 1 indications of the surgical reintervention after aso especially as the child grows or maybe in the adult stage if there was uh, progressive obstruction maybe or any coronary uh, abnormalities causing causing myocardial ischemia or a severe neo ar or severe aortic root dilatation as well thank you sir and uh, sir uh, in cases of trichal like in the uh, second case that i showed of tga 
where there was a left ventricular outflow tract obstruction in addition to a VSD, that is DTG VSD PS. Could we have, what are, what were the, the options for us? As you take it in this picture, the three options we have is Rastelli, Raven, Mikhailo. The commonest one being a Rastelli. Rastelli in a TGA and especially in the DURB kind of a situation, where the, where the aorta is arising from the right ventricle, but is a little bit far away from the interventricular septum, specifically if there is a distance between the crest of the interventricular septum and the lateral wall of the aorta. Now to root it, to bring the aortic flow or rather the LV flow to the aorta, we might have to draw a long baffle, which we have depicted in this picture. But in the course, we might of course some obstruction the right ventricular output tract, that is the right ventricular output being guided to the pulmonary artery. Hence, the pulmonary artery, there might be the need of an RV to PA conduit, which will serve as the routing from the RV to the pulmonary artery. Suppose the routability is a little bit difficult, where the baffle, we baffle the LV to the aorta, but the RVOT has been totally reconstructed because there we cannot use a conduit in those cases, or rather we want to obviate the needs of a need of a conduit. In those cases, we need to transect the pulmonary artery totally from its root, tie up the root, and the uh, pulmonary artery is reconstructed on the lateral wall of the RV by hold of a patch. This is the rare technique where we avoid the we where we can actually uh, avoid the need of a conduit. So these are conduit sparing operations. The last one that is Nikkaido, which is the most complicated one, where the VSD is actually enlarged and through a single hole, the aorta and the pulmonary artery they are all rooted through the same thing, but inside that is from what we see from the outside. But inside, the aorta is baffled to the LV through a special patch. The aortic root is dilated, and the pulmonary artery is also attached to the right ventricular outer surface. When we are seeing this echocardiogram post-operative phase, then it is a little bit difficult to make out the individual outflows. But it has to be seen with much more carefulness so that the output tracks are gradually and accurately uh, I mean, seen in on the echocardiogram. Thank you so much, sir, for taking for these explaining the uh, these complicated operations. And uh, we also have for the regressed LV, as I said, that uh, when the LV is small, and especially in those TGAs which present late, that is, uh, they are present uh, maybe after two months or three months, they are presenting with a small LV and a much bigger RV, and also not falling into the criteria as discussed. There we create baffles by the sending operation or mustard sending operation. The systemic baffle is directed to the LV and the pulmonary baffle is directed to the RV. But uh, RV being the systemic ventricle will uh, eventually, uh, it is predisposed for dysfunction as well as a TR and uh, the arrhythmias are also very common. So, uh, in the Doppler assessment of the uh, venous baffles, baffles we can uh, find out if there is any baffle obstruction in these cases of post-op mastered and sending and also any tricuspid regurgitation and also assess the RP function. Sir, any last comments on these? Dr. Chattopadhyay, sir, any other comments? Yes. On the echo assessment? Yes. yes. In, a, in this any kind of situation which we have uh, rightly shown, the main things which has to be seen is if there is any baffle obstruction because the Apart from the arrhythmias, the main thing which happens during sending surgery is any baffle obstruction, whereby the uh, outflow, outflow, I mean inflow into the into the uh, pulmonary and the system baffles might be obstructed because these are the two main reconstructed parts. Thereafter, I mean the cardiac output may has to be maintained, and there, sometimes there are baffle leaks. The other thing which have to which have to see is the baffle leaks, which can drop in the main, I mean the inflow part, uh, and the share of the inflow part, and obviously. These are the two main factors, apart from obstruction and the baffle leak. Also, the baffle, uh, I mean, baffle courses has to be properly attained. Apart from the fact that if there is any AV valve regurgitation in these particular cases, because there might be AV valve regurgitation associated in these particular, I mean, in this kind of a scenario. Thank you so much, sir. I could uh, really keep, we could keep the discussion on forever but uh, uh, we need to stop for uh, because the, because of the time constraints so let's go to uh, ask dr koshik mukherjee uh, ex associated professor of uh, medical college kolkata and head of the department of decent hospital 
Dr. Mukherjee, can you just uh, let me know what are the operative options for us in cases of tetralogy, which was the third case that was shown? Mm, thanks, Devdatta, for nice presentation and uniting me with my senior colleagues in such a wonderful evening. Uh, TOF actually is very common among our presentation and we wherever we are uh, doing a congenital cardiac surgery, TOF is one of the most uh, precious and to much extent in the earlier life it was a feared thing because the ICR how it behaves depends on how you diagnose the case, how you uh, actually see the anatomy and how is your approach to the TOF. Actually TOF can be managed by a palliative procedure or by a intercardiac repair. The palliative procedure may be a surgical by doing a modified balloptusic shunt or that, that is a shunt, a Gotex tube is inserted between the left subclavian or to left pulmonary artery in right side aortic cards or a right subclavian to RPA in a left side aortic cards. So it ultimately decreases the cyanosis and give you the time frame to operate on a more stable patient. And sometimes the PDA already present can be made patent by a transcatheter stenting to as acting as a natural BT shunt. And the second approach is always intercardiac repair that is uh, infundibular resection BHD closure and if required uh, pulmonary annulus to be enlarged by a transannular patch. So corrective repair and go for a shunt. It is a decision that you have to take beforehand. Whenever the pulmonary annulus score that is you are comparing the pulmonary annulus with the normal uh, scenario or normal children with the same age and same body weight and same BSA. That is a score is there, we had a chart there and that's JIT, that is also called JIT score. And if it is less than minus two or minus three, then you should go for a BT shunt first. And afterwards when the patient becomes stable or the age increases, you can go for a transannular patch when the heart or RV can withstand the free prayer. So corrective repair depends on the annular morphology and annular diameter. And for the corrective repair, we have some score is present. There is Magoon score, then Nakata index. And Magoon score is basically the diameter of MPA, RPA plus LPA and, hello? Yes, yes, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, my good score, yeah. yeah, before bifurcation and divided by the descending aortic diameter. There yeah, is more the diameter at the level of the diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. At the level of the diaphragm, it should be yeah. uh, my good score. We can see it in equal, but some, many a time it is seen in uh, catheter after catheterization. Exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. It is more so, so yes. it is more than 1.8 or more than 2, we can go for ICR. And less than 1.5, we should go for a BT shunt. And for the Nakata index, the cross-sectional area of LPA and the RPA index to the body surface area. And the normal is 330 plus minus 30 millimeter per BSA. At less than 200, you could go for a BT shunt. So it is a already uh, planned approach where patient should go for BT shunt and which patient would go for a ICR. So basically, if we have a small pul hypoplastic branch pulmonary arteries or a small pulmonary annulus or coronary crossing RBOT, those cases we would go for a BT shunt or a transcatheter palliation. And for definitive repair, we would go if the pulmonary annulus is less than three Z scores, then a transannular patch. And if it is more than two Z scores, then it would be a transatrial exactly, approach with BST exactly, closure exactly. and infundibular muscle resection. Uh -huh. Thank you. So this is the post-op and the long-term follow-up. So I think the RV dilatation that is progressive because of the PR, especially in cases of the free PR that happens after the transannular trans patch, 
the rv dilatation is best assessed by a cardiac mri and also in the later stages the left ventricular function is also affected because of the ventricular interdependence the right ventricular keeps on in right, right ventricular volume keeps on increasing and it affects the left ventricular function as well it is greater than 150 ml per body surface area then you should go for a uh, pulmonary valve replacement mm -hmm. otherwise it is irreversible the rv dysfunction so a few words on the tetralogy with absent pulmonary valves maybe yeah mm -hmm. actually the absent pulmonary valve the annulus when the constriction or the obstruction level is at the annulus level not at the valvular level the valvular level is dysplastic so there is a free pair associated with pulmonary annulus stenosis and aneurysm dilatation of the branch ps so ultimately you will require a intercardiac repair either infundibuloplasty infundibular resection with a pa plasty associated with a homograft or maybe a associated with a valve conduit thank you thank you dr mukherjee i thank all the panelists wholeheartedly for being part of this uh, discussion and also the organizers and the chairpersons also thank you so much